First layoffs in tech continue to mount lift shares. Let's check them out right now on a report. They are up six and a half percent. Following this report, the ride sharing company will significantly cut jobs in an effort to reduce costs. Now, according to the Wall Street Journal, this latest layoffs could affect nearly 30 percent of the company, roughly 4,000 workers and potentially reduce costs by 50 percent. Joining us now, D.A. Davidson Managing Director Tom Forte and CFRA Research Senior Equity Analyst Angelo Zeno. Angelo, you cover Lyft, your reaction to the layoff news. Not completely surprised about it, given what we've been seeing, you know, look across the markets here over the last couple of months. I mean, and given the fact that Lyft's already kind of done uh, a, a fairly uh, significant cost cut, you know, several months ago now. Um, that being said, I think this kind of tells you what kind of precarious situation that Lyft really is in. I mean, given the, the share loss that they've had from to Uber here over the last couple of years. So um, overall, I think it was probably something they needed to do. They do need to right size the business model. They, knew, they do need to focus on getting that free cash flow sustainably profitable. And um, but that being said, I think, again, it, it shows you what kind of position these guys are in. And, um, you know, we wouldn't be touching these com this company at all here um, looking ahead. But uh, but it, it was a, a much must needed move in our view. Uh, but Angelo, all that being true, can you be surprised given that one of the first things David Risher, the new CEO, said he want to work on there is improving morale? Yeah, I mean, that's interesting, right? So um, this definitely doesn't do that in terms of improving the morale. But uh, I will tell you this. I mean, it's almost kind of ripping the Band-Aid in many respects. It's something, again, that needs to get done. You do need to right-size the business model before focusing on anything else. Um, and then, you know, we'll see what, what they decide to do on a going forward basis. Our fear is um, they're going to be stuck in maybe this perennial cycle where um, you continue to see cost cuts as the business model um, you know, continues to have to struggle against Uber. And we all know when you kind of think about the Uber and Lyft of the world, what really kind of works is the scalability of this business model. The, the way um, you succeed in this, in this business is by getting that scale up there. And if you can't do that, um, you're stuck in a position like this. So um, again, this might not be the last time you see Lyft um, an announce a, a cost cut of this magnitude. Tom, what do you think about the cuts today? Because over the last year, we're looking at Lyft shares off just about 70%. We know that Lyft has been steadily losing some market share here to Uber. Is this the right move at this point? Sure. So my colleague, Tom White, covers both Lyft and Uber. And if he were here, he would tell you that where Uber's done a good job versus Lyft is essentially having their Uber Eats service, which gave them a little more flexibility uh, when you saw a slowdown in ride sharing. Now, the move, though, to cost cuts uh, via layoffs is very consistent with what we've seen in big tech. If you look at companies reporting next week, in particular, uh, Amazon, Roku, and Pinterest all engaged in a second round of layoffs in the March quarter. So in that regard, I think what Lyft is doing is very consistent with what you're seeing in big tech right now, which is a lot of cost management via layoffs. All right, so let's get the, the bigger picture now. Earnings season really gets underway in tech starting next week. We'll hear from Microsoft, Alphabet, Meta, Amazon, and Snap next week. And the following week, we'll hear from Apple. Tom, let's stay with you. And overall, your expectations going into that pivotal earnings season. Yeah, so my expectations are very low. So again, going back to the notion that if you judge companies by their actions, uh, Amazon, Pinterest, and Roku all had layoffs in the March quarter, in the case of Amazon, late in the quarter. And if they're laying off people, especially late in the quarter, uh, that suggests that the macroeconomic challenges are getting more difficult. And I think when you couple in the mini uh, financial crisis in banking uh, and Roku and Pinterest layoffs, that suggests that digital advertising may have taken a step backwards in the March quarter. So low expectations for me for big tech uh, heading into earnings. Angela, when it comes to the performance of a lot of these tech giants, obviously they have really been leading the market's rally over the last several months since the start of the year. If we do get as weak of an earnings season as many on the street are bracing for, what does that mean for the rally that we've seen in tech? Yeah, I mean, it's so much to kind of um, in many respects, right? I mean, you kind of look at your point maybe year to date, we've seen uh, broader tech up north of 18%. Um, pretty much all driven by multiple expansion, largely. I mean, tech PEs on a 2020-24 basis 
trading about 22 times on an equal weight basis, trading about 16 and a half times. But when you kind of look at the move here, it really has been all multiple expansion. I think as far as Q1 earnings season is concerned here, you really need to see these companies focus on um, at least at the very least beating on the bottom line side of things. And then um, at least kind of guide towards more of a bottoming in terms of the margin side of things with a potential kind of, you know, improving forward commentary on the top line, line side of things, as well as on the margin side of things. We, clearly, the dollar is going to help in this case. You've got some Russia-Ukraine kind of um, headwinds over the last year where those comps start getting also a little bit more favorable as you go into the June quarter. Certain companies also going to lack maybe some supply constraints that they witnessed in the June quarter a year ago. So I think there are some positives in terms of easier comps out there in terms of, and in terms of the Forex. But at, at the very least, I mean, you need to see execution maybe to Tom's point in terms of um, the the cost cuts that we've seen announced and uh, helping on the bottom line side of things. And then some at least positive indications in terms of commentary. Tom, if there's one company that ought to give us a decent sense of the macro, it's Amazon. What are your expectations next week? What's the one thing you'll be focused in on? And if I could just tag on, do you expect more layoffs? Yeah, so I do expect more layoffs because, again, uh, you saw the news of the day is that they're cutting people at Whole Foods. Uh, Whole Foods was perhaps the last round of cuts, uh, suggesting that maybe on a relative basis, they're trying more to focus on grocery. So they were last to cut Whole Foods. But I think my expectations, again, for Amazon are low. Uh, I do think, though, that the weakening of the U.S. dollar uh, versus major currencies uh, should help Amazon, could perhaps add as much as a billion to our revenue forecast for the quarter. Uh, yes, it's encouraging that cost cuts may lead to some uh, better margin, but, but I'm concerned that, uh, you know, this is definitely not the Amazon of 10, 20 years ago, and you can't cut yourself into, uh, you know, strong footing. So uh, low expectations for Amazon. Angelo, two names that you cover, Meta and Alphabet, Google, they are both really uh, participating in this hype that we have seen surrounding AI. How big of a driver do you expect that to be for those two stocks, at least in the near term? Yeah, I mean, you know, clearly when we saw Q4 earnings season take place, a lot of it was really driven on AI, the excitement there, and that kind of, you know, helped that big, you know, the, the rally here over the last couple of, of months. And, um, you know, our view here, I mean, you, you're going to hear a lot on the AI side of things from both companies. You know, clearly there's been, I think, more negativity in terms of the alphabet side of things, which really has held back the multiple in that stocks. We do think a lot of that those concerns are a bit over, uh, of an overreaction. Hopefully they put some of those issues to rest here in terms of the quarter. But more importantly, I think you're going to see, um, you know, AI talked about more so for uh, Alphabet in terms of their Google I.O. conference in May. So that's probably more what Alphabet in terms of the, the May event rather than what we're going to see here um, next week as far as AI is concerned. Should be an intriguing week. Angelo Zeno, Tom Forte, good to see you both. Enjoy the weekend. Thank you.